Ronald Reagan is actually the only president that was born in Illinois, though we have claimed to four different presidents. Of hmm. course, everybody knows about Lincoln, but he was born in Kentucky, Springfield, main area. Um, Ulysses S. Grant also had a home in Galena, Illinois, which is in northwest Illinois along the Mississippi mm -hmm. River. And then, of course, Barack Obama up in Chicago area. But Ronald Reagan was born right here in our little town. Jack and Nell Reagan were born in Fulton, Illinois, and raised there. That's also along the Mississippi River. It's about 30 miles from here, still in Whiteside County. They got married in 1904 and moved to Tampico in 1906 to the little apartment upstairs. Hmm. This is a family picture of Dad Jack, Mom Nell, bigger brother Neil, and Ronald at age five and three. Hmm. They uh, came to Tampico. Uh, Jack was Irish Catholic, and he wanted to raise his boys as Catholic. So he and the older boy went to church here in our Catholic church. However, Mom was Protestant. She's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> so she and son Ronald attended church services at the Church of Christ. She taught Sunday school and Bible classes. Hmm. Tampico was a town of about 1,200 people then, which was good sized for that era, for where we're located. They were actually building the Hennepin Canal just to the east of town. You'll probably cross that somewhere in your, <laughs> in your drive. <laughs> and uh, they wanted to use that to connect the Rock River uh, to the larger uh, canal uh, at Sheffield, Illinois, that then went to the Mississippi River, so it connects all that. However, about the same time, the railroad was also getting big, so the canal never really turned into what they wanted. Mm. However, it's claimed that that's where Ronald Reagan learned to swim, was out in our <laughs> canals outside of town. Uh, when Jack moved here, he worked at the J.C. Pitney store. That's actually the building Kitty Cornered across from here. It's got the large mural on the side. Okay. Uh -huh. It's now a restaurant. However, it is closed on Mondays. <laughs> oh, okay. But Mr. Pitney owned that store, and that's where Jack worked in the general store. Uh, the Reagans lived upstairs only till Ronald was about three months old because she had the two small children. Then they moved to this house here in town. We have a Casey's gas station a couple well, blocks mm -hmm. down, not two blocks because we aren't that big. And it's the second house down. However, it's a private residence, has been for many years. You can drive by it, but it's not open for tours. Yeah. Um, in, uh, when Ronald was about four and a half, Mr. Pitney decided to sell the store. So Jack had to find employment elsewhere. So they moved to the Chicago area after that, but they didn't like the more urban life. So they ended up moving to Pittsburgh, Illinois. And um, they lived here for about a year in this house. Hmm. He went to first grade in Galesburg, Ronald did. Then, then Jack got a, a job in Monmouth, Illinois, so they moved to this home in Monmouth. So they, they went from a two-story, like yeah, there we go. you know, two-story, two stories, two stories. So that was kind hmm. of how they, so uh, at the end of first grade, the teachers tested Ronald because he was uh, very intelligent. He had a photographic memory, so he actually skipped second grade. So he did first grade in Galesburg, third grade in Monmouth. Hmm. While the Reagans did live here, they were very active in the social uh, community and church life. We had, a, we had two general stores. We had a hardware store. We had a, a livestock yard. We had an opera house. Jack and um, Nell both participated in the plays. This one both are in. This one Mrs. Reagan was in. And sometimes if they needed small children, they would have the boys in the play. Hmm. Um, so I mentioned that they did move when Jack was about, or, Neil was about, <laughs> Ronald was about four and a half years old. Mr. Pitney had bought the store back because the owner that had purchased it asked, suddenly uh, passed away from a heart attack at 36 years old. Wow. So he wanted Jack Reagan to come back and work for him. So the Reagans did move back to Tampico when Ronald was in fourth grade. So he attended fourth grade here in Tampico and halfway through fifth grade. Then uh, Mr. Pitney and Mr. Reagan purchased a store together in Dixon, Illinois, a general store, a shoe store, I think it was. And then the Reagans actually stayed there. That's where both Neil and Ronald graduated from Dixon High School. So the family stayed there for many, many years after traveling hmm. quite a bit through their earlier married life. Um, let's see. Again, we have a larger picture there of the family. Okay. After Ronald Reagan became famous, Mm -hmm. He came back to Tampico three times. The second time he came was actually in 1976 when he was running for the primary 
uh, to become president, which he lost that time. But he's standing right underneath the bank, sign out front. <clears throat> okay, over here. This corner is dedicated to his passing on June 5th, 2004. There were many, many visitors that came through the area, signed guest books. And here we have a picture of Ron Jr., his wife, and Nancy Reagan. They're looking out a window from an airplane as they're flying over Tampico. They're looking out at it. Tampico. Hmm. And that is verified in a Chicago Tribune article and also we have a Time Magazine article over there with the same picture in it. So that was kind of their, their nod to Tampico. Hmm. Uh, an interesting picture right here. I mentioned that they moved back when Ronald was about nine years old and the stockyards. And if you notice right here, we have a young boy here. That is Ronald Reagan and he is known for the chin on his hand pose. There's several pictures like that here and he did that all through his life hmm. and right here we have a little uh, area with about the Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier mm -hmm. and he was uh, honor uh, he was a CB which was the construction battalion mm -hmm. old Tampico grade school this is Ronald Reagan's class he is right here with the chin on the hand <laughs> this is also brother Neil's class and this is Neil so the older brother this picture is a nice picture of Neil at age three and Ronald at uh, six months old hmm. this is a picture of Dr. Terry who helped deliver Ronald and I'll mention more about him upstairs when we go mm -hmm. up to the actual birthplace again here he is in the Oval Office, but look at that pose. He's got yeah. a pen in his hand, but it's still the pose that he had. A 1937 picture book from the WHO Barn Dance Frolic. And here we have a very young, and it says Dutch Reagan, because that's what he did go by, his nickname. Very handsome man. This is very interesting here. We had a, a local photographer that took this picture. We had a a uh, storm come through Tampico on November 3rd, 1980. We ended up with the rainbow. He hmm. took this picture. It was sent to uh, Ronald Reagan. And this is actually his, An American Life, Ronald Reagan, an autobiography. Hmm. And in this autobiography, he mentions that he received a picture that is eerie the day before election day a photo was taken of a rainbow and it came down exactly over the birthplace. Hmm. He mentioned it was a double rainbow, so he wondered if it meant two terms. <laughs> he was elected on November 4th, 1980 mm -hmm. in a landslide. The bank was originally across the street. They moved it here in 1918. Of course, it was in existence until 1931, which as many banks did then, you know, closed up. When they started refurbishing these areas, uh, this, all of this was found in the basement down below in the original blueprints of how it was set up. Oh, wow. So they brought it upstairs and set it up. And this is actually where the Reagans had a bank account when they moved back here, hmm. um, the, you know, the second time when the boys were in school. Mrs. J.E. Jack Edward Reagan had $95 in a bank account. And in December uh, 24th, 1919, she withdrew two dollars and had a balance of 93, <laughs> so that must have been her Christmas, Christmas budget. <laughs> so here is the safe that they would have had to wheel across. Now I need to find out where this was stored. They had to bring this back up from the basement or what, mm. and I know there's like a ramp thing, but still. It weighs over 4,000 pounds, it originally came from Cincinnati, Ohio. Unfortunately, many, 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 many years ago, somebody tried to break into it. It's concrete. <clears throat> Like I said, it weighs 4,000 pounds, so it's huh. super heavy. Golly. But they couldn't get through. And once they got in, they still couldn't get to the money because there was a wheel that fit on there and had a combination to actually get into where the money was stored. Hmm. But it's very ornate, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And then the safety deposit boxes have not changed much in all the years. It's still a two-key sure system. The bank had a key, you had a key. It's still the very long box. Hmm. This box 
what it, the items that were in here were never claimed. And we have a very important 90 cent check from 1918. <laughs> there's some other documents in here with like one cent stamps and things like that. Hmm. So this is a large three bedroom apartment. It was only about 10 years old when the Reagans moved here and it cost $10 a month. Jack hmm. made a dollar a day, so about a third of his income, just like they still kind of consider that normal. Um, it has original floors, original, all the woodwork is original, the skylight is original, it did have electricity but no indoor plumbing. <clears throat> when they started refurbishing this in 1976, because they were planning for the next election, hoping okay. that would pan out, there were five layers of wallpaper, the very bottom layer was very similar to this, so they figured that was what was in here when the Reagans left here. Of course, this isn't their furniture. People take their furniture when they move. Yeah. But it represents the area and has all been donated pretty much by local people. Mrs. Ray did sewing. She took in sewing and mending. She gave elocution or speech lessons and she taught piano. So yeah. that was, remember she had a $95 bank account downstairs. <laughs> so she did help supplement mm -hmm. a little bit with that. My grandmother had one of those. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> the carving and... Um, this picture is a very rare picture of Ronald Reagan as an adult with glasses. He was hmm. one of the first people to actually start wearing contact lenses. A hmm. uh, picture of Mom, Nell, Brother Neil, and Ronald, and that's actually on the porch of the house that they moved to. Out in Lowell, or um, out in the, uh, this is actually at the canal, Dad, Jack, Mom, Nell, Neil, and Ronald. Ronald Reagan for uh, ready for a parade, already with a little flag on his <laughs> vehicle. And this is mom and two sisters out on the original cannon out in the park. Hmm. So this is the parlor, which would have only been used on special occasions. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they would have had in here for furniture again. It's just yeah. representative. If you notice, we actually have, there's two stoves, two ways to heat in the winter, so the one there and then one here, it would have had the pipe up there, of course. Mm -hmm. Another picture here of uh, Ronald Reagan as a young boy. Again, notice his pose. <laughs> you can always pick him out. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, couple pictures of Jane Wyman, the first wife. We don't know what they had for entertainment, but one of the uh, ways people entertained themselves during that time frame was a stereoscope where they would put in the different cards. Maybe they would be, uh, like this one looks like a dam or a bridge or something, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they would get postcards of like London and Paris yeah. and just different things. So that's one way they would entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. They may have had a Victorola that was uh, prevalent at the time. They, you know, like I said, they were in the plays and they enjoyed that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that may have been a way that they uh, got some music in their life. Of course, the family Bible is out in California. However, we have the Bible here open to her favorite, uh, now Reagan's favorite verse, to represent that she was, you know, a religious. They were very, uh, she was religious, Jack. So this is the bedroom that Ronald Reagan and Neil Reagan were both born in. Hmm. This was not the parents' main bedroom, but it's thought that she chose to have the boys here so that. Uh, as she was recuperating from childbirth, she could watch what was going on out on Main Street and, okay. you know, yeah. keep an eye on what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. Ronald was born a little before 6 o'clock on November 6, 1911, and the day before we had a big snowstorm come through, over 10 inches of snow. She's having trouble delivering the baby, so they get Dr. Terry, who lived a few apartments away, to come over and help deliver him. Mm. He weighed over 10 pounds, <laughs> and when he was born, Jack said, oh, he's a fat little Dutchman because the town that they came from, Fulton, was a very Dutch community. They were not Dutch, neither he or Nell were Dutch, but many, many Dutch friends. So that nickname between the Dutch boy haircut and Jack saying that is how he hmm. had the name Dutch. Um, they did have a telephone, and it would have been, it probably was not this one, but it would have been the kind where you did this, you know, and talked to the operator and got your party. Mabel Anybody up the, could listen. Mabel up the street yep. and That was my grandma's name, it. actually, so that's funny. <laughs> um, so a type of stove that they may have had in here, now it would have had a reservoir, reservoir on here where they could have kept water warm, but it was wood burning, or they could have burned corn cobs if, you know, hmm. 
the wood supply was. And there's an example of the heating stone. Also okay. the irons. She would uh, have an iron and mm -hmm. use it while it was hot. Then if it would get cooled down, she would have another one already ready to go on the stove. She could change yeah. it out, the handle. And an ice box where they would have let the ice man know how many pounds of ice they want brought in, put it in here. There is a hole in the back where as it melted, it would drain through to a pan underneath. Then they could use that water for other things, you know. Mm -hmm. And then that's what the inside of an ice box looks like. Uh. We're going to step onto the back porch, which was here. However, it was not enclosed. It would have just had the railing. Mm. Um, you can see the outside of what the building looks like. And see, this fascinates me because my great-grandfather, my grandfather, and my dad were all 50-year-plus brick masons. So I just always have a little... Mm. Yeah. Uh, she would have done laundry out here. They didn't have laundromats then. So she would have done laundry out here. This was a, uh, a drying rack from back in the day. She would have had a summer stove out here to cook out here to keep the heat out in the summertime. Another interesting little thing, we still have a funeral home on the other side of the museum. It was a funeral home back in the day, and it was the parent funeral home. Funeral homes needed another a source of income besides people passing away. Many, many of them built furniture and such. The parent funeral home did the wicker buggies and chairs, rocking hmm. chairs, that type of thing. This is always interesting. Remember, the Reagans lived up here. The Seymours lived next door. And they had a young daughter named Daisy. And if Mrs. Reagan did not want to take the boys, it's, remember he was born in February, so she would have had the two boys, you know, in winter yet. She could knock on the window <laughs> and ask Daisy if she would watch the boys while she went and did her errands. That is actually verified in this uh, notarized document telling that Ronald Reagan remembered her telling that story. And back on January 11th, 1981, this is a letter he sent to Daisy wishing her a happy 93rd birthday. Hmm. When he and Nancy came through here in 1992, as a, he was an ex-president, 81 years old, he climbed through here, hmm. and Nancy did, and you are welcome to do that. Many people like to do that because they are on the steps of Ronald Reagan. So this hmm. would have been the Seymour's apartment. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit, for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. 